Good morning, everybody. How do you feel today? Say it loud so you can hear how you feel. A one, two, three. Ah, thank you for saying how you feel. My name is Mr. Channing. Would you like to read a book with me today? I have a book I'd like to read with you. I mean, I don't have it right now. Right now I have this raccoon. Let's see what we can do about that. You ready? One. Two. Three. <laughs> it worked. I'm never sure that's gonna work. This book is called Many Shapes of Clay, written and illustrated by Kanisha Sneed, published by Prestel. Would you like to read this book with me today? I'd like to read it with you. What do you see on the cover here? I see a grown up, and I see a kid, and I see some string. I see a lot of interesting, unusual shapes up here. These are not circles or triangles or squares, I'll tell you that much. And I see that the grown up and the kid both are holding things in front of them. This looks like a vase or a pot, something made out of clay something ceramic. That looks like a lemon to me. Do you think so? Hmm. How do these people feel? Well, they look pretty happy. In my opinion, you want to read this book and find out the story behind this picture? Let's do it. Many shapes of clay. Oh, there's more shapes in here. Could you make all these shapes with clay? Hmm. I think you could. Many shapes of clay. I see a tree here with lemons growing on it, and I see some buildings here. Mm -hmm. Looks a little bit like the apartment building that I live in. Mm -hmm. Maybe you live in an apartment building too. Oh, I see somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little black cat. And down here, I see some more of those shapes. Here's that kid we saw on the cover. This is Isha. You say it just like I said it, Isha, E-I-S-H-A. And this is her cat who loves to take long naps. You think this is the same cat that we saw in the window of the building? Seems likely. This is Isha's mama. She works in a small studio inside the basement of their apartment where she makes shapes from clay. Oh, she's an artist. Mm-hmm. And her medium, the kind of art that she makes, is clay, ceramics, pottery. Here's something she's working on. Here's some other pieces that she made previously. Mm-hmm. Here's this kind of string we saw on the cover. This kind of string is used when you want to cut a piece off the clay. Clay is so soft, you can just use string very carefully, and you can cut a line right through it. Now what kind of shapes does she make? You want to see? Tall shapes. This one's got some spikes on it. How interesting. Small shapes. <laughs> oh! Even bumpy, colorful shapes. I like the look of that one. Isha asks her mama why she doesn't play with the shapes. Isha asks, why do you leave them on the shelves? It takes so much time and patience to make each shape, her mama explains. They're too fragile to play with. Fragile, have you heard that word before? You know what it means? Fragile means that it breaks easily. It's real easy to break. Mama slices off a chunk of clay like butter. You think she uses the string to do that? And then she rolls it into a ball like dough. Oh, so it was like butter, now it's like dough. And she hands it to Isha. It was like butter and now it's like dough, but is it food? Should you eat clay? No. Isha's got some clay now too. What is she gonna do? Think she's going to make something? Well, Isha stretches and smooths and rolls the cool clay in her hands. She doesn't know what she'll make today. Maybe I'll make 
A two-headed lizard with polka dots. <laughs> Ooh. But one shape in particular makes Isha very happy. Can you tell what it is? What is she holding in her hand? Hmm, does that look like a lemon? Just like that lemon tree we saw toward the beginning of the book? Mm hmm It reminds her of the day last summer when she and Papa picked a handful of lemons. She paints her shape the same bright yellow. See, that's her and her Papa. So she has her shape, she's made out of clay. She paints it. Mm -hmm. All this hard work deserves a pause, Mama says. How about some fresh air? She's saying, why don't we take a break? Sweat drips down from the top of her head to the tip of her chin. Mama misses Papa, too. Hmm. Why does Mama miss Papa? Why does Isha miss Papa? Well, it sounds like he's not around. Both of them feel like they miss him. They wish that he was there. You know how they feel? Yeah, I know how they feel. Outside, a summer breeze rustles through the neighborhood trees while the sun slowly sinks behind the buildings. Oh, so it's summer and it's afternoon. I bet it's hot. What do you see out here? I see two kids playing ball. I see this sign up here that says Harrington's Flowers. Oh, the flower shop that we saw in that building in the beginning of the book. And I see yellow flowers here. I see purple flowers, blue flowers, pale pink flowers, a big old green plant. Here's a worker wearing an apron at the flower store. Isha sits on the stoop and plays with her yellow shape. That yellow shape really makes her happy. Ah, the whole neighborhood seems to be taking a pause. Except for Ms. Harrington from the flower market, she rides past with a backpack full of lavender. She waves at Isha as a sprig of lavender falls out of her backpack and floats down to the sidewalk. Isha wonders if Miss Harrington will notice the missing sprig when she gets home. If she does notice that one is missing, will she feel sad about it? I don't know. What do you think? As Isha sits on the stoop, she imagines so many things she could do with her shape. Like what? What is she doing here? Looks like she took her shape someplace special. Maybe we'll go to the beach someday, Isha says to herself. The sound of the ocean hugging the shore as water cooled her toes would feel so good. Have you ever seen the ocean? Have you ever been to the beach? It's interesting to look at the ocean and just try to think about how big it is. The rumble of a skateboard interrupts Isha's daydream. She looks down at her shape. It's less yellow now, like the color of a lemon that's lost its taste. But that's okay, because now it makes music when Isha taps it with her fingers. Isha taps her clay. Do you remember what her mama said about why mama leaves all the shapes up on the shelf? Because they're fragile. Remember what that means? It means that they break easily. Oh, Isha. Oh, I'm sorry. I can just imagine how Isha feels right now. There's a picture here of how she feels. You want to see it? Hmm. Isha's shape has broken into many pieces on the ground. Each piece reflects the sadness she feels. I see all of these different broken pieces of yellow that must have come from her shape, but I see something else broken here too. What do you see? Hmm. Now hold on a second. This is art. 
Art is when you want to say something, but you can't just say it. Did Isha herself really crack and fall into pieces? No. But what did happen? Did she feel like it? Did she feel so sad that she felt like she cracked and broke into pieces? Have you ever felt like this? <sighs> Isha tries to think of ways to put the pieces back together. Oh, she's got all these pieces spread out in front of her. And she's thinking. She's really thinking. Tape? Well, tape wouldn't last very long. Glue? Glue always sticks to the wrong things. What Isha feels is hard to describe. Like something that's too heavy to lift? Hmm. Can you imagine what it would be like to try to pick up something that's too heavy to lift on your back? <sighs> Isha's eyes fill with tears as she looks down at all the broken pieces. Ooh, she's almost gonna cry. Maybe she will cry. Maybe she's gonna cry some more. Crying's all right. Sometimes crying helps. It doesn't change things, but sometimes it feels good to get it out. What happened? Asks Mama as she scoops Isha up onto her lap. Is her mom mad? Does she look mad? Not to me, Isha says. I gave my shape so much time and patience. It's very hard to be patient sometimes, you know what I mean? But now it's in pieces, Isha says. Whew. Her mom talks to her. It's okay to feel sad about those broken pieces, Mama says. There are times, many times, when we lose the things we love. Hmm. Mama somehow knows what Isha is feeling. I never knew she could feel the same feelings, Isha thinks, and hugs her mama close. Hmm. They're walking upstairs, being very careful not to step on this cat who's just trying to sleep. Together, they pick up the broken pieces and walk past the shapes on mama's shelves, stepping over the last step where the cat purrs sound asleep. This cat really needs to find some other place to sleep, but you try telling a cat that. Cats will not listen. Mama talks to her. You can't always fix what's broken, but you can always try. Mama says as she pulls out a small box from under her bed. Hmm. What do you think is in this box? Do you think it is a tiny magical dinosaur who's going to come out and do a magic spell on the broken pieces and make them all go back to normal. It could be. This is a book. A lot of strange things can happen in books. What else do you think it could be? Let's find out. Inside are spindles of twine, a thick kind of string, in different sizes, colors, and textures. Oh! Different thicknesses, different colors, they feel different too. Hmm, what can you do with string? Slowly, with patience, oh, patience again, and with care, Mama and Isha connect all the broken pieces together by looping twine around each one. Zoop, 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 zoop. See them all wrapped up? So what are they doing? Are they using glue to fix it? Are they using tape to fix it? Are they making it back into exactly the same lemon shape that it used to be? Nope. They're making something new. They're making something that they could not make before. 
if it was still in a lemon shape. You know what I mean? Hmm. Hmm. Until there's only one piece left. Maybe I can make it into something new tomorrow, Isha thinks out loud. I see Isha smiling. You see her smiling? I see her looking in the mirror, wearing her lemon shirt. Mm -hmm. What is she wearing around her neck? It's a necklace. A necklace made of what? A necklace made of lemon-shaped pieces. What a wonderful idea, Mama says, gazing at Isha with a warm smile. Now, let's wash up and see what we can come up with for dinner. Here they are. Just sitting under a tree, reading a book. Just like you and me are reading a book right now. How wonderful. Oh, oh, I see one more ladybug. <laughs> and I see all the lemons that you could ever want just falling off that tree, waiting for someone to come grab them. <laughs> the end. Thank you for reading that book with me. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> Hello, it's me again. Do you have a few minutes? I have a couple of things that I found at the beach that I think are really cool. I'd like to show them to you. Now the beach I went to is actually pretty close to where I live here in Oakland, California. When you go to that beach, you will immediately notice that there's some sand there. There's some rocks there. There's a lot of shells there. But what there mostly is, is pieces of pottery, cups and plates and bowls that have been all broken and washed over and over again by the ocean and pushed up onto the beach. And the reason it's called TEPCO is because the company that made all these cups and bowls and plates a long time ago was called TEPCO. And it was right here in the Bay Area. And the reason they're all in the ocean is because TEPCO used to just take their trash and throw it into the ocean. This was about 50 years ago. This was before I was born. And since then, people in charge have made some rules to say you gotta treat the ocean like it matters. Can't just be dumping trash in there. Here's a piece I think is very interesting. It's just the handle of a cup. And this has been in the water so long that every time the ocean water splashes over it, it wears away at it. We call that, it erodes it. It wears off these sharp parts that used to be sharp and that are not sharp anymore. They're all rounded down. Now, the reason I was thinking about these related to the book we just read, Many Shapes of Clay, well, there's a couple different reasons. One is, of course, that Isha and her mama love working with clay and making shapes. Mm-hmm making pots and making that beautiful lemon shape that Isha made. But the other reason that it made me think of the book is because there's a page in the book, a scene in the book, that I thought was very funny when I read it, and then something about it made me keep thinking about it. It's the scene where Isha is thinking about all the fun things that she could do with her lemon, the lemon that she made out of clay. And the thing that she thinks of is that she could go to the beach with her lemon. Now, first of all, that's a very nice thought, just to go to the beach and bring your lemon with you. But I also remember from the book that Isha and her mama, they both miss Isha's dad. The book doesn't say where Isha's dad is. With art, sometimes it's not always important to know the true story. It's more important to know what you think. Art's that connection between you and the art. You know what I mean? When I was two years old, my parents got a divorce. My mom and dad got divorced. I could not see him anytime I wanted to. I only saw him a few weeks every year. Well, I missed my dad all the time, but sometimes I missed him a lot. And I would think, I wish that I could have a hug from my dad right now. 
and I couldn't. Some families are like that. I know some families where one of the grown-ups has a job that takes them away from home for long periods of time. I know some families where one of the grown-ups is in jail or in prison. That's a very difficult situation to be in for everybody. I know some families where one of the grown-ups has died. And when someone dies, they can't come back. And that's a tough situation to be in too. And I know some families where nobody feels like they are missing. There is no right shape for clay to be. You can squish it, you can break it, you can make something new out of it. And there's no right shape for a family to be either. What happened with Isha and her mom when that lemon broke by accident? Do they feel sad about it? Yeah, absolutely. And then what? Did they just feel sad about it? Or did they put in the work to make something new? Mm -hmm. They figured out that they probably couldn't make it exactly the way it used to be, but they could take it and make something new out of it. Like a necklace. <laughs> what do you think about this? I don't have any strings, so I'm using an old microphone cable. I might change it for something else later, or I might decide I like it like this. If you have some thoughts about this book, I would love to hear them too. Please, please do let me know what they are. All right, I'm really leaving now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.